first I'm going to go through a little historical background because we really need the historical background to really get what's going on right now. So, in 1978, Mao Zedong is dead. Uh, Jiang Cheng and uh, his wife and the Gang of Four have been deposed um, after ruling China. Um, and in 77, 78, there's um, a period of, of Chinese history called Beijing Spring, uh, where students and intellectuals can criticize the government, and uh, it's you know open dissent is is allowed. And in December of 1978, there's this movement called the Democracy Wall Protest, where um, students are posting essays and you know posters and, and poems and stuff. And um, it sort of culminates in this. Um, essay posted by the, uh, this guy named Wei Jingsheng, um, entitled The Fifth Modernization. And uh, he's referring to this, this propaganda campaign by Deng Xiaoping, who was then the premier leader of, uh, of China, the, the great leader, um, where he wanted to modernize industry, agriculture, science and technology, and national defense. And Wei Jingsheng is saying, that's not enough. We need to modernize society. We need to modernize the people. We need to uh, introduce democracy. And it really is very polemical, really, um, you know, vicious, acidic. Uh, he's kind of, he's got his, his, his claws and he's really uh, digging in. Um, the people need democracy. When they demand democracy, they simply demand that which originally belonged to them. Whoever dares to deny them democracy is nothing but a shameless bandit, even more despicable than the capitalist who robs the workers' sweat and blood. We want to become the masters of our own destiny. We need no gods and no emperors. We believe in no savior. We want to direct our own lives. We do not want to be the mere tools in the hands of despots with expansionist ambitions, wish to use us to carry out modernization geared to their own advantage. Trust your own forces. We alone create human history. As for those who award themselves the titles of great leaders and great teachers, and who have swindled the people of their most precious rights for several decades now, may they all go to hell. So it, it was really very <laughs> hostile to, uh, you know, Deng Xiaoping and, and, and the, uh, the uh, Politburo. Um, and, and that was quenched immediately. Um, you know, Wei Jingsheng goes to jail, Democracy Wall movement ends, um, Wei Jingsheng doesn't get released until 1997 when he's exiled to the United States. And he had, had this quote near the end, I don't know if he had any knowledge of the civil rights protests in the United States, I don't think he did, but this just sort of jumped out at me. Out, out of me. And so we have no, we don't have any student demonstrations until 19, 1986 when uh, Fang Lijer, who's a professor of physics, comes back uh, from the United States to China and he starts giving these speeches and it rouses some students to protest in various cities. Um, and the general secretary of the time, Hu Yaobang, uh, is amenable to their demands. He, he wants to liberalize China, he wants open society, you know, open dissent, free press, all of that. Um, and he sacked in 1987 because um, the rest of the CCP doesn't agree with him. Um, and he dies on April 15, 1989, which inspires the Tiananmen Square protests. Um, massive numbers of students come out to mourn him. They, leave, they lay wreaths uh, at their universities. They march down to Tiananmen Square. Um, they have this list of demands. They're uh, engaged in a hunger strike. It inspires protests in various other cities. And um, eventually, um, at, at first, the, the reaction was, um, there, there was an editorial that came out in April, April 26th, I believe, um, that was directed by Li Peng, who was the premier at the time. Um, it was very hardline, we need to quash it. Uh, at the time, Zhao Ziyang, who was the gen then general secretary, was outside of the country, he was in North Korea. And he comes back and he says, no, no, we don't need to crush this, we need to um, modify our, our current policy, we need to welcome them with open arms. Um, but Soon after that, Zhao Tian realizes that uh, none of the CCP supports him in this, in this matter. Um, he's, he knows he's going to be, be sacked. Um, and so there's this famous photo of Zhao Tian addressing the crowd. And um, it's, at this point, he knows that he's on his way out. And I find it funny that standing, standing right next to him is this guy, yes. Wen Jiabao. Uh, was the current premier of China. I think he was a, a uh, mid-level official in the like, Ministry of Geology or something. Um, who knows why he's out there, but interesting history. Um, so uh, Zhao Xiong is, is, so the, the, the army comes into Beijing. Um, various estimates say hundreds of people died, thousands of people died, we don't know, it's hard to tell. Um, 
you know, the people were, the protesters died, um, soldiers died, they were attacking each other, uh, Molotov cocktails were thrown, um, and, and they rolled into Tiananmen. They cleared it by 5.40 in the morning on June 5th. And Zhao Xiang was, was deposed. So what does this have to, to say about chi protests in China today? Uh, I'm just giving you sort of a history, a short history of protests in China from 1978 to 1989. Um, there are some things that are similar about these three protests. They're all led by students and intellectuals. Um, they're all mainly urban. Um, there's really no protest in rural areas. Um, and they all have to do with um, political freedoms. Uh, some of the demands of the Tiananmen Square uh, protesters in 1989 were affirm as correct Hu Yaobang's views on democracy and freedom, uh, admit that the campaigns against spiritual pollution and bourgeois liberalization had been wrong, which were uh, political campaigns instituted by the CCP to uh, quash dissent, um, and uh, stop press censorship, um, increase funding for education, and restrictions on demonstrations in Beijing, uh, so forth. These are, these are really political freedoms that they're demanding. Um, now, when we look at political protest in China today, um, before I go on, I just want to ask an open question. What's, who's the first person who comes to mind when you think of political protest in China today? Just anyone name a shout and an answer. A name. One name. No? Yes, Liu Xiaobo. So is, is protest in modern China this guy? Um, he's pretty famous. Um, he uh, uh, was behind Charter 08 in 2008 which um, was a manifesto um, that uh, demanded the Chinese government reform, um, basically throw out the old constitution, um, replace it with an American-style constitution. It was released on the uh, 60th anniversary of the UDHR, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It was supposed to evoke the Czechoslovakian Charter 77. Um, and uh, he's the director of the, he used to be the director of the Chinese Penn Center, which is a sort of a, a press freedom uh, organization. And, that's actually funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, which is funded by the U.S. Congress. And he's also famous for persuading students to leave Tiananmen during the uh, 1989 massacre and save lives then. So that's one model for, for protests in China. Um, another one, this guy, Ai Weiwei. Uh, he was jailed last spring. He's really, really famous in the international community. Everyone knows him. Um, and he's really famous for conducting this film project after the Sichuan earthquake in 2008, um, where he's shining a spotlight on these, these poorly built schools that were crumbling to the ground. Um, that there was no um, seismic retrofitting at, at all, and, and children died. And so he was, he was um, jailed under tax evasion charges last year. This, this guy's another example of protest in China. And then there's this guy. There's this, this is another example. Um, this is John Huntsman, um, the former ambassador of, of the United States to China. And this is a picture of him at a protest of the Jasmine Revolution last year, on February 20th, 2011. It's, it's him. He's, he's strolling past a McDonald's, as you can see, in Wangfujing, which is sort of a touristy uh, business district that actually, you know, no one from Beijing goes to. I mean, it's, it's full of, you know rural people and, and western tourists and selling, you know, all sorts of over overpriced <laughs> crap. And, <laughs> and um, so this Jasmine Revolution was sort of a revolution. I mean, there was this maybe a hundred people outside of the McDonald's Wang Fujing and on that first Sunday. Um, and they were, they were calls to do it every single Sunday, but the next few Sundays, the only people who showed up were foreign journalists and they were jailed. Um, there weren't any Chinese, Chinese people didn't show up. And when they did show up on this first Sunday, they were not protesting. They were not shouting slogans. They were not, not carrying on signs. They were just simply strolling. Um, so so that's, that's three models. But what I'm here to argue is that this is not protest in China. This is um, sort of fake. Um, Liu Xiaobo is a democratic pro protester, but no one in China knows who he is. Um, very few people remember Tiananmen. I mean, at least in my generation. People from, who were born after 1989 aren't taught Tiananmen. They don't know the tank man. They don't know any of that. Um, and so um, Tiananmen, the visibility of Tiananmen, Tiananmen is very low. 
Uh, visibility for people like this, Chapel is very low. Um, even Highway Way, you 